Hi, this is Gavin. My website's hickorygolf.co.uk. I just thought I'd do a short video about this set of nickel irons. So there's eight clubs in this set and I'm just going to briefly run through them. I've had them probably a couple of years and um, I've played a couple of rounds with them and they're very nice. So it starts with what is numbered as a one iron and if you can just see here on the toe it says the FG Tate. So that's the Freddy Tate clique model. Now Freddy Tate was a very good uh, champion amateur player of the 1890s. He was actually killed in the Boer War in South Africa. Um, but these clubs date from the 1930s, so it's quite interesting to think that his name was still being used 30 years after his death to promote golf clubs. And he was famed for his clique play, uh, so that's the longest iron typically uh, with the least loft in the bag. And um, yeah, it's very interesting that uh, the George Nicol company um, who made these heads is still using his name, which is hmm, quite thought provoking. So these clubs are all stamped up with the pro's name of Fred Jarman of Stockport. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. And that's the nickel hand mark. Um, I think there were several brothers called Jarman. And in fact, um, just recently, somebody on Facebook, one of the Facebook groups I belong to, uh, he, he came on and posted something that he'd just started collecting golf clubs. And his family name was Jarman. And indeed, he was a, a descendant of the uh, family of Jarman professionals. So this is a one iron. And it's actually got stamped on the head seven and a half ounces and I've made a note ooh, some some actual uh, months ago now that the length of this club is 38 and a half inches it has a loft of 21 degrees and a swing weight of B8 which by today's standard is light but one thing I found in looking at a lot of hickories over the years is their swing weights can be considerably lighter than what we would consider normal today for irons, which is D2. Generally speaking, if you pick up a modern iron, it will be, uh, and put it on a, on a, a weighing scale, uh, a swing weight scale, it will come out as D2. So this to a lot of mon modern eyes would be, oh, it's way too light. But one thing I found is not to discount light irons when it comes to hickory play, because also what's important is the overall weight of the club. So what, what swing weight is doing is it's, it's taking a fulcrum point, I think it's about 12 or 14 inches from the butt end of the club, and it's giving you a ratio of how much this portion of the club weighs to this portion of the club. So you could have a, a club that has a, a very light overall weight, which might be D2 swing weight, or you could have a very heavy overall weight of a club that has a D2 swing weight. So if somebody contacts me and says, um, I, I only play D2 clubs, then it's uh, my next question is, okay, so what overall weight of clubs do you use? And most of the time they, they don't know. So what, what I'm saying is not to discount swing lighter swing weight clubs, particularly when it comes to hickory, clubs because hickory clubs will generally weigh more than a modern shafted, certainly a graphite shafted iron. So that's the one iron. Then there's what's called a two iron which has a loft of 24 degrees and is also the same length at 38 and a half inches as the one iron and that is just slightly heavier at B9 swing weight. Then there's a three iron, which is 38 degrees long, 
B8 swing weight, so for all intents and purposes uh, the same as the previous two irons, and 28 degrees loft. Then there's a four iron at 37 and three quarter inches long. B9, again the same, at 31 degrees loft. So I'm trying to think what 31 degrees would be in a modern set. And of course, modern sets have had a lot of lofts strengthened, particularly over the past two, three decades. So I think that's almost getting down to what would be a seven iron. So yeah, what's called a four iron in this set is probably a modern seven iron in, in modern iron terminology. So where did we get to? Four. Okay, now we've got a five iron. And traditionally, yep, that's stamped mashy. And that's where some people will say, well, um, when I do my hickory playing days, um, I'll say, well, uh, the, this is a mashy, which is equivalent to a modern seven-ish. Uh, and they'll say, well, I thought a mashy was a, a, a five iron. And I'll say, yes, well, a five uh, mashies were a five iron back in the day, back in the 1920s and 30s. But lofts are two or three clubs different in number terms. Um, so that's a mashy five, and that is 37 and three quarter inches long, B9, so again, same swing weight, and 34 degrees of loft. Then a six iron, 37 and a half inches long, C5, so six swing weight points heavier than the previous five irons. 38 degrees loft. So that is, in terms of hickory play, between most mashies and most mashy niblicks. Because in my experience, most mashies come in at about 37 degrees, and most mashy niblicks come in at 41 degrees. So that's somewhere in between, but it's four degrees uh, stronger than the mashie in this set. So really, in any set of clubs, you, you would ideally want um, four degrees between lofts. And if you looked at a modern set, you would see three or four degrees between each iron. Um, in, in, if we go to other hickory golf iron sets, let's say if you're only playing with four irons, you might have a, a mid iron at about 28 degrees loft. You might have a mashy at 36 degrees loft, a mashy niblick at 43 degrees loft, and a niblick at 50 51. So there you've got much more of a gap between clubs. You might have six or seven or eight degrees. The final club in this, no, sorry, we've got to the six. I beg your pardon. Now we've got a seven iron at 37.25 degrees long, C5 swing weight, so the same as the one before it, and 42 degrees loft. So slightly weaker than most mashy niblicks. Then uh, the number eight, and what you do tend to find by the late 1920s, uh, very uh, start of the 1930s was that a lot of niblicks were numbered eight and that's why you, you also tend to find um, a lot of putters stamped nine and there's a lot of people say well why why is my putter stamped nine simply it was the ninth club in, in that set so this is 36.75 inches long it's uh, C5 swing weight so exactly the same as the one before it and 50 degrees loft. So this whole set actually have uh, lighter swing weights than uh, modern a modern set of clubs. But one might one one can see that they're all actually uh, the first five irons are virtually the same, and the last three shorter irons are virtually the same. So I don't think that's happened by chance. That's done by the maker who who has thought okay we're, we're gonna this is how we're gonna make up these this set of clubs and how the swing weights are gonna work one thing interestingly on this set is I could tell you the name of probably the original owner and it's Mr. Mackay 
because on nearly all of the irons they are stamped here with what is clearly I would say a hand stamp. These stamps were almost certainly done at the factory and then this has possibly been done afterwards by the pro who sold them or even the original owner and they're stamped Mackay. Apart from the number seven and the number two iron and they don't have any stamps at all where all the others are stamped Mackay. So it's interesting to think what that might mean. Um, I don't think he just made a mistake in not stamping two of his irons. Uh, it could be that he started off with lesser irons in the set and then thought actually um, I, I, I want some more irons in between. Now I've got some other sets which I'll be showing on some of my videos um, that are stamped two, four, seven, eight, let's say, and, and it may be that the, the person went into the shop and bought what was called a half set. So they, they, they could buy clubs individually and the, the, the professional might say, well, you only need actually these four irons to start. And once you're a bit more experienced, you can come back and buy the other numbered clubs. So that might have happened with this set. Um, this is only my conjecture. I'll, we'll never know for sure. Or it could be that uh, perhaps he lost one out playing and then went and back to the professional and said, well, actually, I've lost my uh, number two iron. Um, I, I need another one. Um, can you sell me one? And then he just never got round to stamping it. There's a, there's a few little things that could have happened that meant that two of the irons are not stamped. But one thing about these clubs is, I should mention as well, um, is that I think all of them, and without quickly checking, I can't be absolutely certain, all of them have the name Jarman, Fred Jarman, on the shafts. So again, this indicates that they have always been a set. They're, they're not an associated set, as we would say, because um, sometimes also I build up associated sets where I'm getting heads from uh, of the same type, but from different sources and then making up into a set. So this indicates to me that these have always been a set and indeed I bought them as a set. Um, and uh, it's just a slight quirkiness of, of why one or two of them are, are marked differently. So anyway, that's uh, the nickel Jarman. Oh, one little thing just noticed there. The, the Niblick has actually got Zenith on it here, whereas the others don't. Now I am going to show on another one of my videos a set of nickels that are all stamped Zenith here. So that's quite interesting that um, when the person bought these from the pro, did the pro actually say, well, here's one that's the Zenith model and, and here's one that's not the Zenith model? Maybe. It's, it's almost impossible to tell. But they're all stamped up Fred Jarman Stockport Golf Club, which is um, up in northwest England, towards Manchester, Liverpool way. So there we are, that's the set of nickels. They've all got good, strong, straight shafts on them, in very, very good condition. Um, I'm just trying to remember whether I've repinned any of the heads. That one I've repinned there. I use brass pins. Uh, I think it's uh, easier to work with. Is that the only one I've repinned? I think so. Nope, there's another one that's repinned. So, the grips are a thick brown suede, which, uh, again, they, they came actually with these grips on, but um, they were not gripped up, uh, to my taste, particularly well. So I had to actually take all the grips off and put some tape under them and re-whip them. Now these clubs are for sale on my website, hickorygolf.co.uk. 
They are uh, a rare set to find all stamped up of eight clubs the same. So these are at the top end of the market price. And if you wanted to find out that price, please visit my website, hickorygolf.co.uk. And if you have any questions, please drop me a line, either through my website. My email is addresses info at timewarpgolf.com. Or you can find me on Facebook, Time Warp Golf or Gavin Bottrell. And uh, if you have any questions or queries, please get in touch. Thanks for watching. Bye.